My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, from verse 25 to 32. Ephesians, chapter 4, from verse 25 to 32. And the theme of our contemplation is, Whom without thundering threats? Whom without thundering threats? Whom without thundering threats? Let's go into prayer. Father in heaven, I, your word is seven, stand before your children to present before you your children that are craving and yearning for your blessing, craving and yearning for your grace. Your grace is sufficient for us, O oh Father. With your grace, we can conquer every anger. We can conquer every impatience in us. With your grace, we can overcome. We stand before your presence to thank you for not allowing your thunder and lightning to locate your children. You use your thunder and lightning to locate the enemies coming. You fight our hidden battle, known and unknown. Sometimes the devil manipulates the good things you have given us to turn against your children, to frighten them, to put fear into them. But you, my God, you have already empowered us to be conquerors, to be winners, and to repel and to rebuke all principles and powers. Abba, Father, tonight is another night for you to embolden us, for you to invigorate us, for you to synergize us, Father, to be able to go out there and spread the good news with us here. Father, we present before you our families that are struggling. Struggling with one thing or the other, domestic violence everywhere. Cold war in some families. Father, deliver us from all weaknesses. Help us to be able to shape our tongues. Bless us, Father. Help us to have self-control over our tongue. Before we talk, Father, may you help us to discern what we are about to release. Let it be love. Let it be a word of love, word of peace, not thunder and threats in many families. When families uh, get together, having get together this Thanksgiving time, Father, let it be get together of love, get together of peace, let this year's thanksgiving be thanksgiving of unity and reunion. Let it be unity and peace, not the one that has thundering words that threatens one another. Deliver your family on this earth, Father, from anger and resentment. I know it's not easy, Father, for many families that have been having and harboring an enmity for long. Let this Thanksgiving be Thanksgiving year of blessing and grace. Let it be Thanksgiving of forgiveness. So many people keep malice. So many people remember what one had done in the past, but we don't even keep account of what we do to God. Father, forgive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Pause for a while and think about it. 
Are you ready to forgive in this Thanksgiving period? Not many people that started January with us are alive after this moment. You may know about today and tonight, but you may not know about tomorrow. Make use of tonight. Make use of tonight to make amend for tomorrow. Avoid procrastination. Avoid procrastination. Father, we present before you all our families that are struggling. We present before you our weaknesses, our judgmental mind and heart. We present before you our unforgiving spirit that saps our energy. We spend time and energy to record other people's deeds against us. Sometimes we keep a lot of malice recording wrongs done to us. We don't record our deeds against God. Father, forgive. Teach us how to talk to one another politely. Teach us how to teach to talk to one another politely, Father. Let's talk love, not malice. Let's talk love, not war. Let your peace reign in our heart and in our families. Let your peace reign in our families. You say that our house shall be house of prayer, not house of anger. Not house of war. Not house of enmity. Not house of cold war. Even though we have cold season now. Why would you add cold war into that cold winter? It would be very devastating for you and your family. Let your love bring oneness to your family. Let your peaceful heart translate into joy and happiness to your family. To dissolve the winter, cold weather around your family. When there is love, you may not even feel that the house is full of cold. But when you are in enmity, you feel the cold weather. Even the walls will be touching. You touch the walls, you'll be angry with the wall. Because you're angry with everybody, angry with the cold on the wall, angry with the cold on the floor, angry with the pets around you. You start thundering around. Without listening to yourself. You are not. You don't have a, a, a hearing impediment, but sometimes you don't hear yourself. I can understand someone that has hearing impediment, trying to shout to to hear himself or herself. But because you are becluttered with anger, you don't even know that you are shouting. You don't even know you are yelling. If you yell too much, I will send you to Yale University to learn how to calm down your tempo. How to manage your anger. You have to go to Yale University. They will teach you not not to yell again. Heavenly Father, 
Your children have gathered tonight. You call us children. And sometimes we behave like little children. Teach us to be mature. Mature adults in the Lord's vineyard. Teach us how to control our anger. Teach us how to talk to one another with every love and politeness. We are love and charity abide. There God is found. We are love and charity abide. There God is found. We are love and charity abide. There God is found. We are love and charity abide. The our God is found. Father, teach us how to love. Remove the anger and bitterness. Remove the red rage that we bring into our family. Remove the face of the devil. that deceive us to see one another as devil and we shout and yell. May we see your face in every member of our family. May we see your face in our brothers and sisters. For when we see your face in our brothers and sisters, husband or wife, then we can talk to you through them. Say that we are two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, that we do unto you. Remind us what you have told us in the Bible. Because when anger sets in, we forget everything in the Bible. We lash it out. Father, teach us that you are living above board. You created us in your own image and likeness. We have to live above board. So that there will be difference between animal instinct and human wisdom. We reason like humans, not just sharing instinct with animals. The dogs, the lions, the, the subtle cause with, the, with their roaring and barking. The dog barks at every provocation. Why would it condescend so low to behave like an untamed dog? And then the dog in the house will be looking at us and hiding because it is the dog that's supposed to do what we are doing. And when the dog looks at us and says, what is these people doing? What, what are they doing? The dog, if the, if the dog can talk, the dog will start teaching you not to be barking, not to be yelling, not to be shouting at each other. Because the whole house will thunder it. And the kind of words that will be coming out will be threats and venoms. That even the cats around and the dogs will be hiding. And sometimes you forget that your children are around. You forget that the pets are also watching. And they will go into hiding because they read every, 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 every body, your body language your facial outlook, your demeanor. They are very sensitive animals. Father, we are presenting before you our weaknesses, our struggle in the life, in our families, 
in our area of work, in our business centers. So many people have been provoked, I can understand. So many people have been pushed to the wall, I understand. But do not allow us to be at the same level with them. Father, deliver your children that call upon your name. Teach us how to love one another. Teach us how to love one another. Remove the darkness that has covered many families. Let your radiance of your light shine. Let the radiance of your light shine. Your light of peace. The light of love, let it shine. Father, I ask you at this hour to deliver Mazen and Kano. And many of our youths that are languishing in the prison yard just for asking for peace, asking for basic amenities. Freedom of speech is allowed in the whole world. But in some places, if you speak your mind, they will jail you for many years and nobody will ask of you. Bless Mazen Nandekan. And many youths, many of our youths are there. Some are sick. Some are dying. So many things are happening to our youths. And that still called the leaders of tomorrow. Is it in the prison yard? Leaders of tomorrow being harshly treated. When they come out, what would they be? When they have faced the harsh reality of the prison yard for doing nothing. A lot of injustices in many countries. Some of our youths end up in Libya. They are looking for greener pasture. And they are facing the harsh reality of the moment. When someone is walking under the sun, Sometimes the person will be will be talking with anger. When someone is walking under the co- under the shade, you see that the temperament will change, the demeanor will change for the better. Many people are suffering in many countries. Many are living in abject poverty. A hungry man is an angry man. A hungry woman is an angry woman. When one does not get what he or she wants, the person ponders. And some people made out threats. This is not how you made us. But sometimes nature nurtures environment can enhance or retard one's behavior. Father, may we imitate you. Father, let this night be a night of blessing for your children. Let your anointing flow. Heal wounded hearts. Heal many families that are wounded. Heal many people that are traumatized and are speaking from their pain, emotional pain, mental torture. Some people are traumatized. Some speak from their past. 
unresolved situations in their life and they come out from the subconscious. And sometimes they don't even know when they leash it out in the public of your grandmother. Abba Father, deliver your children from thunder and threats in their families. Deliver them from thunder and threats in their area of work. So many people have lost their jobs because they couldn't control their temper. So many people have lost their jobs because they fought where they were doing their work and they couldn't even condone it anymore. And they let it out and ended up somewhere they don't like. Devil is a liar. Abba Father, I pray for your children that are struggling with anger. Some are having pain of the past and he's trying to rule them. He's trying to control their past and present. And some people have have tried to uh, to to heal themselves, and they ended up drinking too much, smoking away their life, and that's not what they want to do. Some people bought a house, and they're going through divorce, and that house. It's not an under foreclosure. Many people are angry. Many families are angry. Going through divorce. And someone's sweat is being taken away from him or her. So she's not happy. Sometimes it ends up with thundering threats. Father, I pray that you heal wounded hearts. Heal wounded hearts. Heal their soul. Oh my God. Heal their hearts with your anointing. Heal their souls, oh my God. Heal their hearts with your anointing. Your anointing break the yoke, oh my God. Your anointing heals, oh my Savior. Deliver your people, Father Babu. Heal them from their wounds, O God. Abba Father, it is only you that can heal the wounded hearts. Some people don't forget easily. Some people don't forgive easily because of what they went through in the past and some are still going through that at this moment. And they find it very difficult to forgive. They find it very difficult to understand why things are going the way it is going in their own life. So many people in their houses have been threatened by voodoo and all the black magics. I come against all principles and powers hovering around my children's house. That house does not belong to you. Go away from the house. I command you to go away. Every spirit that has been torturing and tormenting my children, that spirit of anger, go away in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I rebuke the spirit of anger to go away from the house. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The house is the house of prayer. I shower grace is upon you tonight. I shower grace is upon you tonight, children of the light. That you'll be able to talk gently to your in law. Your son in law will love you. Your daughter in law will love you. Your father in law will love you. Your mother in law will love you. May all your siblings be able to come together. Let the Spirit of God pilot the affair of this house. And teach each and every one of you how to talk to one another in a soft and gentle way. Abba Father, wipe away all fears from their eyes. Deliver your people tonight. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you? How are you feeling tonight? I would like us to reflect on book of uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 25 to 32. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 25, chapter 4, sorry, from verse 25 to 32. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 25 to 32. And I read, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood, and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one another. Be angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger. Verse 27. And do not give the devil a foothold. Verse 28. He who has been stealing must steal no more. He who has been stealing must steal no longer. But must walk. Doing good with his own hands. That he may have something to share with the one in need. Uh, put, put, your, put your cell phone in the mute. I'm hearing noise. He who has been stealing must steal no longer. But must walk. Doing good with his own hands that he may have something to share with the one in need. Verse 29. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. Verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all rage and anger, outcry and slander, along with every form of malice. Verse 32. Be kind and tender-hearted to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Child of God, when we listen to Paul writing to the Ephesians, he is also writing, writing to heart of Jesus and Mary, and prayer ministry. 
heart of Jesus and made prime minister. St. Paul is writing to us tonight. He's addressing us the way he addressed the Ephesians. When I went to Ephesus in 2015, I was like, oh my word, I'm walking on the Bible. You feel the bumps and chills. You connect with the past. When you are reading the Bible, try to go line by line. Allow the Bible to talk to you. St. Paul said, therefore, each of us must, it's a command, must put off falsehood. Many are, are, are very, very uh, trickish. Sometimes we claim what we are not. We deceive one another. And when the truth comes, it's a surprise to your friend. It's a surprise to your neighbor. Surprise to your sibling. Someone said to a friend, I know the road. I know this business. All I need is capital. And the friend said, oh, wow. I have the capital. You have the idea. And then go for it. The, the person one does not even know how to design the computer or market their goods. The other one knows how to do that. The other one has the capital. The other one does not have. And two of them went into business on trust. The other one that brought the money, he didn't even know what was going on. The one that knows how to do it in the in the internet was selling the market and telling the person there was no market. And then when he sells, he brings the, the capital, the interest and everything, make it turn over. And still was telling the other person that nothing was moving. That he was making turnover and taking the interest. And then paying the person when, when everything had gone almost five months. And then when he had made it more than the other person and even gotten the, the capital, he was telling the person, you can move on. Uh, you always bother me. Look at that. When you had no money, you were begging the other person to bring capital. That you had the idea. Now you have the capital and the idea. You want to push the other person out. That's how some people uh, are cost for life. Some people will have the money, but will not be healthy to enjoy that money. So the other person eventually found out and, 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 and saw the, how the interest and everything was coming up. Some other person taught the person how to, how to look into the internet. And he was able to find out that his so-called friend and business partner had been uh, embezzling their money, manipulating the computer, manipulating their business to his own advantage at his own expense. How would you feel if you were in the, in the shoe of that person? You tell the person, don't be angry, Right? You must put on falsehood and speak truthfully, truthfully to your neighbor. Be honest to your neighbor. Be honest to your brother. Be honest to your sisters. Be honest to your brothers and sisters. Be honest to your husband, honest to your wife. Do not live a false life. Because you are, you are attracting cause to yourself. The money of your brother or your sister is crying out, give me my money. Send me back. back. The money will be saying it doesn't belong to you. 
send me to your, the owner. Send me to the owner. And you say, no. You want to keep it. And every, every time, that, 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 that money that belongs to someone will make your life miserable. You don't know what's going on with you. We have a, a just God. We have a just God that fights our hidden battle. Exodus chapter 22 from verse 22 to 23. It says, do not uh, uh, inflict a, a pain to an orphan, the widow, the stranger in your midst. When they when they when they call upon me, when they, when I I see their cry, when I listen to their groaning, it, it will be hard for that person. Genesis chapter twelve verse three says, "I will bless those who bless me, and I will curse those who curse you." That's what God told Abraham. Why are you? Uh, uh, inviting cost to yourself. Why are you making your brother or sister to be angry? Sometimes we don't even know what we are bringing to our families. You don't know why your children, some of your children are stealing. Sometimes you don't know that what you did when you were growing up may affect your family in the future. Because the same blood, a good tree bears good fruit. A good tree bears good fruit. When you are growing up, you may think that all this thing doesn't matter. But when you are doing certain things that are not godly, it's in your gene, it's in your DNA. What you sow, you will reap. But today is a new beginning. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for God's forgiveness. Amend your way. Every time you'll be making someone angry. Some people are sadists. You make someone to be angry and at the same time you tell the person you are shouting. You are the one that push someone and you, you are telling the person where to, where to fall. And you're asking the person, why are you falling down? We are all members of one another. That's what St. Paul is telling us in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 25 to 26. He said, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. So we are all members of one another. Verse 26, he said, Be angry. Of course, if someone annoys you, if someone offends you, you'll be hungry, angry. That's natural. But uh, there's a caveat. He said, do not sin. How would you sin? By allowing that anger to be a... We'll see tomorrow. <laughs> Settle fast. Do not allow the anger to cross overnight in your area of work. If someone offends you, do not carry it and go to your car and start driving home. No. Don't do that to yourself. Tell the person, can, I, I need to talk to you. If you are not safe, you can call one or two people or you can report to your supervisor. Settle scores on time. Settle scores on time. If you cannot endure. Some people know how to handle their problem. 
some people don't. Some people know how to handle it. They will just brush it aside and, and go home. It works for you. That's fine. But do not let resentment lead into sin. The sunset must not find you still angry. Do not give the devil a chance. You may be angry, but do not sin. Don't allow that anger to turn into sin. Do not let the sun to set upon your anger. That's how St. Paul was talking to the Ephesians. And then in verse 27, it says, do not give the devil a foothold. Do, do not give the devil a chance. Do not give the devil the opportunity to come into your, your beloved family, your peaceful family, and then shatter all of you. Before you talk to someone in a rude, in, in, in a, a rude way, a, or giving people attitude and so on, talk to yourselves. Go to the mirror. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself, hold on to, hold your peace. Take a deep breath and breathe out. Take, take a glass of water or a bottle of water. Calm yourself down. And then you can talk politely. When you are angry and you go with emotion, you may vomit what you would not like to bring back again. You may vomit something that will just uh, set fire in your love and marriage. You may say something that will destroy your sibling's uh, relationship or your in-laws' relationship with you. Control your thundering threats. Control your curses. Some people, when they are angry, they curse everybody. Learn how to control your anger. If you're a man or woman of faith, find a place in the Bible to read. Uh, read about love. All the, almost all the Gospel of John is talking about love. Or First John or Second John. Just, talk about, just go into that love. That spiritual agape love with God and, and your neighbor. Find a place in the scripture to talk to you. That will help. Let that spirituality that you, that you have, that bond you have with Jesus kick in. Do not allow the devil to pilot your affair at that moment. That's what Paul was telling the Ephesians. Do not. Do not give the devil a footstool. Do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil that chance. Don't, don't, don't condescend to the devil. Don't be in the same level with the devil. Don't give the devil the chance. You are driving and you are having road rage. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. It's dangerous. You don't, know that, you don't know whether the person that you are about to uh, argue with, whether he or she has a gun. And someone will not reach home that very day. Sometimes silence is the best answer for the fool. Sometimes silence helps you to avoid danger. That doesn't mean that you will not uh, say your mind. But look around, discern before you talk. Pray for spirit of discernment. Be well recollected. Meditate upon your words. That will help you very well in your family. Some people don't think before they talk. Some people talk before they think. Uh, never you text or leave voicemail or voice message when you are angry. Don't. And then verse 28 says, 
he who has been stealing must steal no longer. Oyoshi. Zudeboshi. There was a story, you might have heard this story before. Uh, Arm robbers came to one family somewhere and told, the, uh, and told everybody in that family to, to lie flat on the floor. And everybody was lying flat on the floor. And then a little boy was looking at their aunties and their brothers. And then uh, one of the aunties was looking at... Uh, uh, the arm robbers that were covering their faces. Uh, the, the little boy just got up and went to the one of the robbers carrying guns. They the monosh anti anti karulegal. Was reporting to the the arm robber that one of the aunties uh, was looking at at, at them. And the, the man, the man looking at the innocent child, calling him thief. <laughs> uh, it wasn't funny, but it was funny. The naivety of that boy saved situation in that family. And the God, God was able to use that boy to stop the robbery in that family. For so an armed robber, knowing that he was an armed robber, saw the innocence of the child, braving it and coming to him and touch him and, and report to one of the aunties. The man was laughing and called other people that they should leave. That this innocent child taught him a lesson. That he called him a thief. And at the same time, reported uh, the auntie that was looking at him. They were put to confusion. Confusion came in. And he was the man in charge. And he told them that they will leave this place, that it, there's something here that didn't allow them to, to steal. And they left. And that was how the story came out. The demoyosh. God can use a little child to quench that, that fire in the family. Do not corrupt the child in the house. Before you 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 you, you raise your voice, think twice. They know what's going on in the house. When you are talking, you don't know that the house is shaking, and some of them will go into the room and start crying. Why are they crying? They don't know what else to do. They don't know what else to tell you. How would they advise you? They cry. That was the only thing they would do. And some of them that are mature will say, Mom or Dad, it's okay. But the little child will cry. He or she does not know what else to do. But something spoke to that child. That Daddy and Mommy, something was going on. That wasn't good. If you're happy, they will be happy. If you're angry, they will sense it. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Dirty, dirty, dirty talks. Sometimes we don't even listen to ourselves what we tell each other, one another when we are angry, cursing one another. What if, if you tell, for instance, your child offended you and you say, come here, you madman or mad boy, and all of a sudden your child behaves like a madman or mad daughter. You will start crying, but you cost your child. You cost your brother. You say, mad, you're mad. And that person becomes, becomes mad. And then you start crying to God. Oh, I don't mean it. Oh, I did not mean it. It was out of anger. 
but it, because from your heart, that that venom came out. Especially when you're a man or woman of prayer, be very careful how you talk. You can set your house on fire when you're a man or woman of prayer. Control your tongue. Watch your tongue. Father, I pray for homes without thundering threats. We pray that every family will, will be in peace. Present before the Lord at this hour, child of God, whatever that has been causing problems in your family. What triggers your anger? Husband and wife, what triggers your anger to each other? You know what's going on. Brothers and sisters, what is triggering your anger against one another? Is it money? Or someone is cheating the other? Or someone is a manipulator? And Paul is telling us in verse 30 not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. In whom we are sealed for the day of redemption. In verse 31 he said, get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all rage and anger. Get rid of outcry and slander. Sometimes we talk ill against our brothers and sisters because you 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 you're angry with your brother or your sister. You go at the back and you say all kinds of things, whether good or bad. You just want to blackmail your brother or your sister. You, you, you talk trash. You spoil your family. You spoil your brother. You spoil your sister. You destroy your wife. You destroy your husband. You destroy your in-laws. What's going on? Pray, child of God, that your home will be without thunder and threats. That your home will be without curses. Enemies are cursing you. You are cursing your family. You run away from outside threat and you, are, and you are not comfortable with your family. The world out there is dangerous and, you do, and your house is not also conducive for you to sleep. It's not conducive for you to rest. It's not conducive for you to sleep. It's not conducive for you to read. Even when you come back from work, you don't make your family a, 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 a conducive place for you to rest. What is the source of this anger? Some people don't like music. Some people just like news. Be considerate. Be considerate. Have timetable for music. Have timetable for news. Compliment one another. Compliment one another. If your music is so loud, consider other people. If you are watching a game or football or basketball, consider your husband that is about to go to night walk. Consider your wife that is, that is going to night walk or resting after work. Consider your children that are doing their homework. Stop provoking everybody in the house. Stop inviting enemies to come into your marriage house, into your family. 
book of Psalm 37 verse 8 says, Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret. It can only bring harm. Book of Psalm 37 verse 8. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret. It can only bring harm. Romans chapter 3 verse 14 says, Their mouths are full of caution and bitterness. Their mouths are full of caution and bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 says, Put off your former way of life, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Look at that. Paul said to the Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 says, But now you must put aside all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your tongue. Paul said to the Colossians chapter 3 verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. The same thing is applicable to wives. Wife, respect your husband and do not be harsh with him. Men always love respect. Women always want to be loved. If you love your wife, why are you harsh on her? If you love your husband, respect him. But you have to respect yourself before you are being respected. You have to make yourself to be loved. So that people will love you. Vice versa. Create an opportunity for people, for your family, to love you, to respect you. First Peter chapter two verse one says, "Read yourselves, therefore, all of malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy." Some people are hypocrites. You will say something, you don't do it, but you want others to do it. That's hypocrisy, or what you are doing. You don't see your own, and you point at other people's uh, situation. And what they do. You are hypocrites. You are, you are quick to see other people's uh, weakness. You don't see your own. You do the same thing you are accusing other people. You are shouting and you are telling the other person, why are you shouting? You are the one shouting to. You don't listen to yourself, but you, hear, you are hearing the other person shout. Can it be against at home? First Corinthians chapter four verse two says, "We work hard with our own hands. When we are vilified, we bless. When we are persecuted, we enjoy it." Father in heaven, I stand before your throne to bless your children tonight. Deliver them from the road rage. Deliver them from anger. Deliver them from cursing one another. Deliver them from attacking one another. So many people have ended their own marriage in death. So many have ended in being enemy, enemies for life. Abba Father, I pray for healing. Complete my time here. Restore back what was lost in one way or the other. You have advised us not to carry our, our, our anger overnight. Father, teach us how to forgive. Teach us how to let go and let God. Teach us how to control our tongue. Teach us how to control our anger. So that when we pray, 
you will be able to answer her petitions. When someone does not brush the teeth for one month, two months, and talk to someone, the person will be uncomfortable. It can imagine when we when our mouths are not uh, worthy to talk to God, when our hearts are far away from godliness, something is blocking our petitions. You pray and pray and pray, and if nothing is happening, look into yourself. You remove anger. Learn to forgive and forget. It's not easy what I'm telling you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will deliver us from anger, heal our wounded heart, and bless your petitions one by one. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.